these mushriks of Quraysh, they decided we need to fix the Muslims. They're starting to become so powerful. So they decided to go to the Jewish clans around, some of the Jewish people, and ask them, how do we deal with this man? So they said, very simple. If you want to know whether he is a prophet or not, you ask him three questions. If he can answer you, he's a prophet. If he cannot answer you, he's not a prophet. What are the three questions? They say, the first, ask him about the, some youth of a long time ago. What a question. Someone comes to you, tell me about some youth of a long time ago. Second question, ask him about a man who went, who traveled from the east to the west and he was powerful. A man of a long time ago. Ask him. What type of a question? The third question, ask him about the soul and how it works. So the Quraysh were excited. They thought this man is never going to come with an answer. They told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we have three questions for you. You answer them, we accept. You don't answer them, don't accept. What are the questions? So when they said the questions, he said, I will give you the response tomorrow. And he went back waiting for revelation. Revelation did not come. They came, what happened? He said, tomorrow, revelation did not come. Tomorrow, revelation did not come. Fifteen days went by and Quraysh came to him and told him, what is it? Fifteen days have gone by, you haven't yet come. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saddened. He was making dua to Allah, Ya Allah, send me revelation with the response. And fifteen days later, the revelation came down. Why did it delay? Simple reason. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say, Insha'Allah. So Allah says in Surah Al-Kahf, وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ Don't ever say you are going to do something tomorrow without adding the statement, if Allah wills, with it. So if you say, I'm going to do this tomorrow, say, inshallah, which means if Allah wills. As they say, God willing, in the English language, we say, if Allah wills. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that lesson. So when revelation came, the response of all three questions came. One was Surah Al-Kahf. The whole surah named after the people of the cave, those were the youth of a long time ago. The seven of them, according to some narrations. And Allah makes mention of it in Surah Al-Kahf. إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَىٰ They were the youth who believed in their Rabb and we increased them in guidance. And Allah gives the story, beautiful story, Surah Al-Kahf. We mentioned it last year when we spoke of the stories of the prophets and when we spoke of the sleeper caves and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. <coughs> Secondly, the man who traveled from the east to the west, the powerful man, he was Dhul Qarnayn. Also in Surah Al-Kahf towards the end, where Allah makes mention of Dhul Qarnayn. He traveled from here to there. This is what he did. And this is what happened. He had a meeting with Ya'juj and Ma'juj where he entrapped them and so on. So all this was made mention of Quraysh was gobsmacked. The third question. قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They are asking you about the soul and how it operates. Tell them the soul is by the instruction of Allah and He has not given you knowledge except but a little. That is exactly what the Jewish people found in their books in terms of a response when it came to the soul. So they knew this man is a messenger. Still, they did not accept. And the people of Quraysh, they still did not accept. Look at this. They asking questions. When the questions are answered, they still don't want to take it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who break our promises. Now the kuffar of Mecca were left with one option. They went to Abu Talib. They said, Abu Talib, now it's too much. We need your nephew. You need to stop protecting him. And this guarantee of yours, you need to withdraw it. We are making you the following offer. We can give you blood money of how many people you want, not just one. Give him to us, we execute him. He said, no, I'm not interested. Imagine blood money is always one for one. They said, we give you how many you like. Say it. You want blood money of 10 people, we give you. 
but give us one, this one man. He said, no. Then they said, okay, we make you another offer. Take any one of our children from the highest of families. And give us your nephew. You can keep that child and give him to us. He says, are you people mad? Are you crazy? You want me to take one of your sons to look after him so he can grow nicely. And you want to take my nephew in order to kill him. Doesn't make sense. Not at all. Foolish. He says, I'm not going to agree with that. So then they said, okay, we're not going to have any luck with this Abu Talib. Now they gathered. They gathered around and they decided amongst the tribes, let us sign a document. We must sign a document as unlettered as they were. They decided to put pen on paper in the sense they decided to write something. What did they write? They drew up a treaty to say these families of Banu Muttalib and Banu Hashim who are Muslim, we are going to expel them from our cities, meaning from our little suburb that we are living in right now, this part of Mecca, they can go out into the outskirts and we will not deal with them. We will not buy from them and we will not sell to them. We will not marry in them and we will not allow them to marry in us. And we will not provide them anything and we won't accept anything from them. We will never sign treaties with them and we don't want them to sign anything with us. We will not mix with them and we don't want them to mix with us. We will not sit with them and we don't want them to sit with us. We will not talk to them and we don't want them to talk to us. We will not enter their houses and we don't want them to enter our houses. Complete sanctions. Imagine. Against who? Against believers. People who believed in one Allah. People who had the direct help of the Almighty. But this was all the plan of the Almighty. Later on, the Muslims always speak about how these days were. There were people who hated Islam at that particular time, who accepted it later on. And they say, how foolish we were at that time. How Allah blessed us to hold us a little bit. Had Allah punished us whilst we were still in that time, we perhaps would have never ever believed. Now it's us and our offspring and children and children's children. May Allah grant us steadfastness. So this thing, they wrote it. And what did they do? They hung it in the Kaaba, inside the Kaaba. They hung it and everyone abided by it. So no one spoke to these people. And what happened? Because they used to take Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the outskirts in order to protect him from being killed by the people of Quraysh. Because had he been killed by the people of Quraysh, there would have been massive disaster there. There would have been an outbreak of war. So the Muslims and Abu Talib, and some of the family members of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they used to ensure that he sleeps in a certain place where nobody would be able to reach him. So what they did, the people of Quraysh, they decided, right, you're staying there, you're not coming here. The Muslims were surrounded. They weren't allowed to come out. No one was allowed to go in with food, with any form of goodness. The one who was exempt from this, although he belonged to the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was Abu Lahab, because he was an enemy. He was one of those who used to go around telling the people, watch out, don't even give them food. What happened? They had their provisions, their food depleted. When it depleted, one year passed. One year passed, what happened? Another year passed. There was no food. No one gave them food, no one dealt with them, nothing happened. Wallahi. The Prophet ﷺ began to eat leaves of the tree together with his companions. And together with some who were not even Muslim, who happened to be there because it was their family, a few. And no one battered an island from Quraysh. They are watching these people suffering. So much so that they began to cook the skins or roast the skins of the animals. They had eaten up all their animals roasting the skins of their animals and chewing on this, the inside of that skin Allahu Akbar to try and extract whatever goodness they could have had and sucking on the roots of some of these shrubs that were there in the desert in order to get water and they had suffered for three years in what was known as Shia bi Abi Talib the name of this place like a valley just in the outskirts of where these people were where the Muslims were now surrounded. And what had happened? Allahu Akbar. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed his companions, instructed them, you can now go to Habasha.
go back to Abyssinia. You can go back to Abyssinia. Inshallah, Allah will grant you a place there. Allah will grant you safety. There is a ruler there who is just. He is an African ruler who is a Christian man who is just. He will not oppress you. He will treat you well and he will welcome you and he will look after you. His name is Ashama. He is the Negus of Abyssinia where Ethiopia is today. So it is reported that the second batch of people silently left. And this time it was more difficult to leave. From amongst them, it is reported there were 83 men. If we count Ammar ibn Yasir, 83. And if we don't count him, 82. There is a difference of opinion as to whether he went or did not go. And 18 women, they had left. And the Amir or the person who was made their leader was Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And they had gone, they arrived in Abyssinia. Meanwhile, the Muslims are suffering in this sanctioned area where they were completely surrounded. Nothing goes in, nothing comes out. No one talks to them, nothing happens. So when Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu got with his group of men and women to Najashi in Africa, this was the first place that Islam got a base besides Arabia. Before Medina, already Islam had arrived in Africa. Subhanallah. Islam had arrived in Africa first before everywhere else. And this was just a few years in, approximately five years after the prophethood. Five years after the prophethood, it already arrived in Africa. And Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu tells Najashi, we are people, we've been oppressed, we have uh, a Nabi amongst us, a messenger who has come with the word of Allah. He has instructed us to do this, to do that, to stop worshipping idols, to stop oppressing our women, to stop cheating and deceiving, to look after our neighbors, to honor our treaties and to fulfill our promises. And he has instructed us to pray and to, to fast and to give alms to the poor and so on. And he has done this and that. And our people began to persecute us. They wanted us to go back to the religion of our forefathers. They want us. We were a nation who used to bury our daughters alive. We were a nation who used to engage in so much mockery of our own women folk. We used to buy and sell and trade in human beings. And we used to do this and that and so many different things. And we used to worship idols completely until Allah sent in our midst a messenger who came with a book. And he came with revelation. Revelation. And he instructed us to do this and this. Najashi heard and he told him, you are welcome in this land and you will be protected here and you may worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But hang on, the people of Quraysh, they had already sent their men, Amr ibn al-As. He was sent with Abdullah ibn Abi Rabia. And some narrations make mention of Amara ibn al-Walid. They were sent to Najashi as well. They got to Najashi. They said, wait, these people are traitors. We are here in order to get back certain young people who have ran away and they, they are being sought after in Quraysh. And our people have sent us here and we come here to trade a lot. And we need these people back because they have been swearing our gods and they have turned away from the religion of our forefathers and, and, and. And Najashi was so upset, so upset very angry because they had brought him gifts. They gave him lots of gifts. They were wealthy people, Quraysh. They brought him gifts and so on. And he heard from Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. And he says, these people are correct. They will stay here and you will not be able to do anything. You need to return. The following morning, these two decided, let's try and strike a chord. So they go to Najashi in the morning and they say, do you know what they say about Jesus? May peace be upon him. Isa. They know this man is a Christian. So they say, these people blaspheme Jesus. So Najashi calls Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. He says, what do you say about Jesus? He says, we say whatever Allah has instructed us. Whatever our messenger has instructed us. We say that he was the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted to the Virgin Mary. And he was born without a father and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him life. He spoke to people when he was a baby and he declared that he is Abdullah wa Rasuluhu. He is none other than a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a prophet of his. And that's what we say. And we stop there. So Najashi looks and he says, 
read me some verses from what you have. So they started reading the verses Kaf Haya Ain Sad. Allahu Akbar. Dikru Rahmati Rabbika Abdahu Zakariya. If Nada Rabbahu Nida and Khafiya. Najashi, just like Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu, began to cry so much so that verses were revealed telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there are people who are leaders of the Christians whom when they heard the Quran they began to weep. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ When they heard the verses of the Quran being read, their eyes became filled with tears. The tears began to roll down because of what they knew was the truth. And they said, Oh, our Rabb, we believe, so write us from amongst those who have borne witness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. Inshallah, tomorrow we will go through what happened at this particular time with Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and with Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will get to see the victory of the Muslims and what had happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness until we meet again. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Introducing the top rated Islamic app in the world, One Islam TV. The app offers a smooth, immersive viewing experience with user-friendly features and seamless interface. Discover the power of technology for the purpose of spreading the light of Islam to every corner of the world. Download the One Islam TV app now.